All right, welcome back to another episode of Ramblings with an Elderly Teen. I'm trying not to record at like obscene hours in the day anymore. So you may hear some fire truck noises. You may hear people banging on the walls. You may hear the shower running from time to time. But at least I'm getting more sleep. Okay, so I think that's more important than a few distractions here and there. Anyways, today we're going to be continuing to talk about my IB experience, and in particular, we're going to be discussing the social side effects of IB.、Um, this will be like the last side effects、uh, episode in the series. And I think this side of IB is something that isn't typically considered.、Um, it's often forgot forgotten about, aside from the fact that IB students don't have a life, which to some extent is true. Let's really dive into what th- these social side effects are. So the first thing I would say is that I sort of lost all my friends outside of IB. Aside from a select few people, most of the people I hung out with back in junior high that were not in IB with me, I kind of lost contact with them, because the only time I could hang out with them was at lunch or if I passed them in the hallways in between class. And because I never had any time on the weekend to hang out with people, really the only time I could talk to these people were. The twenty minutes during lunchtime, and obviously that's not really a lot of time to maintain a relationship with someone, you know. So those people really drifted away, and unless I made a point of contacting them, like through text or Instagram outside of school, I never really talked to those people. And in general, I just couldn't really relate to people outside of IB anymore. Like we weren't in the same classes, we weren't dealing with the same assignments, we couldn't talk about the same unit tests coming up, you know. And at the end of the day, we just had different issues to deal with. Like so many of my friends outside of IB were talking about buying grad dresses in October, but. I was like the idea of graduation was so far from my mind in October, because at that point I didn't even know if I could graduate. I didn't even know if I could get into university. Like I wasn't even thinking about my grad dress, and so I just couldn't relate to these people anymore, and I couldn't really talk about my IB experiences with them either because I felt. Pretentious talking about it, and I didn't want to come off as this superior person or someone who thinks really highly of themselves. Because I know that like IB students tend to get a bad rep amongst、um, people who aren't in IB, especially when you're complaining all the time and bragging about your IB courses. So I didn't want to come off as pretentious, but I genuinely had like problems I wanted to talk about.、Um, so I couldn't really talk to those people about it. So really, anybody that wasn't in IB, I kind of drifted away from them. Another side effect I had.、Um, Is just my social life in general, unlike the, your typical high school experience, I guess, like the ones you see in the movies. I never really had time to hang out on the weekends or go to parties and things like that. And I don't even know if people do that normally or if that's just something you see in movies. But a lot of IB was spent. Almost like mourning the life I never had. I was really mourning my teenage years and my youth and sort of this、uh, life I had envisioned for myself in my head, 
and I kind of lost all of that. I really became just confined to my house and school. I became a hermit, and I genuinely had no social life that didn't involve academics in some way. So, if you really care about hanging out with people or going to parties, I'm sure you you could make time for it, but. To some level, there will be like a mourning stage of this life that you could have had, but sacrificed for IB. Now let's talk about the IB community, because, like I said in previous episodes, this is one of the marketed benefits of IB is that you can find a family with IB through trauma bonding.、Um, <laughs> I guess. So, did I find community within IB? Sure, I already kind of talked about this before, but you know, you can certainly relate to other people based on the fact that you're experiencing the same thing. You're all in the same boat. You're in the same classes with the same assignments. You get it. You know. You're living the same life essentially, but there's still this underlying sense of jealousy and inferiority when compared to those around you. And a lot of the time, I felt like an imposter and I felt stupid.、Um, because of that, I couldn't fully. Create a meaningful relationship with those around me because I was constantly comparing myself to them, and so subconsciously I viewed them as almost the enemy or com- competition. Right? When you're constantly surrounded by highly achieving people, not just in terms of grades, but people who Are doing all these amazing things in terms of their extracurriculars, like they're the president of so and so club, or they're winning all these awards, or they're receiving recognition on a national level, or things like that. And you're not. You feel really bad about yourself, and you always feel like you're being outcompeted by those around you. And I guess I'll tell you a. Funny, entertaining story. I always felt stupid in English class because whenever we would discuss the novels, people would always have such intelligent things to say, and I would struggle to come up with a a contributing point I could add to the conversation. So I, we were we were discussing this novel, and I brought up a point to my group members. And one of my group members was like, "Wow, that is really profound." And I was like, "Thanks," but the issue was at the time I didn't know what the word "profound" meant, and I just felt like the stupidest idiot on planet Earth because I I had to Google it, and this person was giving me a compliment on my insights, and I didn't even understand what the compliment meant. And that was when I f- truly felt like I am not cut out to be here. I don't know how I got in here. There must be some mistake, because I am the only stupid one that doesn't understand what's going on. And on top of that, I never really made time to hang out with people in IB outside of class. And a lot of that is my own working habits.、Um, I know a lot of people like learn better when they're studying in a group or they're working with people. But for me, studying in a group is super distracting, and it's not productive for me. So, even when I'm studying in a group, the entire time I'm just doing it for the sake of them studying, because in my head I'm thinking. I'm going to have to go home and review all this later because I am not remembering any of the studying that's going on. So, I guess I was isolating myself to a certain extent simply because of my working habits. Like I needed to work alone 
to really learn. Like even if I was just sitting next to someone and we were both working individually, I would subconsciously feel some sort of pressure or distraction simply with their presence. Like I truly need to work alone to get things done. And so a lot of the time during my spare, when everybody else would be hanging out in the cafeteria or going off campus to, or is it campus in high school? Off campus, yeah, I think. Going off campus to grab food or whatever. I wouldn't be hanging out with people. I would be sitting alone in the library frantically researching for my EE or studying for something, right? And some people may find that respectable, like using your spare productively. I, I, do, I am glad I did that, but it really cut me off from the people around me. And a lot of the time I felt like I had no friends or no real friends that I could turn to. Um, and another side effect is that in general, my social battery was just so small. Because whenever I'm stressed and anxious, I tend to lose my personality. I become a really grouchy, irritable individual. I'm, I'm assuming I'm not very pleasant to be around when I'm stressed. I, I didn't want to subject people to that. And I also didn't, ju- I naturally, when I'm stressed, I tend to hermit myself and I'm not very sociable because interacting with people really drains me. I am an introvert. And so um, when I was that exhausted, I simply could not muster up enough energy to put on an extroverted persona and put a smile on my face. Um, I just didn't have the energy to uh, upkeep with my personality. So in terms of social life, I had none aside from here and there interactions with a few of my closest friends and interactions in class with my fellow IB students. But in general, I was alone and lonely most of the time. So I think that's like the one of the bigger factors. But another aspect that I never really considered until recently was my relationship with my parents during IB. And of course, this could be different with everybody. But for me personally, IB ruined my relationship with my parents for many reasons. First of all, Part of the reason I was doing IB was for my parents. And because I was struggling and having such a difficult time, a lot of that frustration and almost resentment was put onto them. And I think in my mind, I blamed a lot of what I was feeling on my parents because the whole reason I was even putting myself in this situation was for my parents and I just felt so much pressure from their end to succeed and achieve academically so that's why I feel like IB was never my choice to begin with because yes they told me I had a choice and I could do whatever I wanted but if I didn't do IB that would you know That would not be following the path they had envisioned for me. And in that sense, it would be a disappointment. So I did feel a lot of pressure to do well. And obviously, when you're in a more rigorous program, your marks will go down for a lot of people. And so my mom would constantly be checking in on my grades and asking me if I needed a tutor And I just perceived that as I'm not doing well enough to meet her expectations. And so this constant disappointing of the parental figures really did a number on my ego. And it really created this uh, distance between me and my parents. I didn't feel like I could open up to them 
about what I was going through because they were the authority. They were the one administering this in a sense. And I just didn't feel comfortable bringing up my struggle with them because it would feel like I was weak in some way or that I just, or that I was oversensitive and just not good enough to succeed in IB. But also aside from that, um, my parents did, you know, they did see that I was stressed. So they would always try to get me to take a break. So they would always force me to like go outside or go, you know, grocery shopping with them or cook dinner with them. And as I said before, I was a very big procrastinator. So a lot of the time I was quote unquote working, I was procrastinating. But I would appear to my parents like I was working. So to them, I was, you know, sitting there doing homework for like five hours a day when maybe 50% of that was just spent watching YouTube videos. So my parents would always come in somehow at the exact time I would actually stop procrastinating and do work. So maybe two hours into my uh, procrastinating, I would actually start working. And then, bam, my parent would walk in and say, hey, you need to take a break now. To them, they were helping me. But from my perspective, I was constantly getting distracted by my parents. And that also created this rift because I felt like they wouldn't leave me alone and let me work properly. Especially during the summer, um, my my parents would always try to get me to go outside and do all these summer activities with them. And I understand that they were trying to help me decompress and relax a little bit, but I just got so much anxiety from them because it just felt like I was constantly being forced to do this and that and my intention was always being divided and I never just had a solid chunk of time to sit down and focus on my summer readings. And I, of course I would never say anything. I would just do as I was told and do this or do that. But this just really built up a lot of frustration and resentment and anxiety that I never really told them about and it wasn't until the summer was over like in grade 12 when I finally told them you need to stop distracting me um, and you just need to let me work but now I feel guilty about it I feel guilty that I wasn't able to spend more time with my parents and I actually, this is another thing I regret a lot, is choosing IB over my parents. In the long term, in in 50 years from now, I'm not going to be thinking about the essay that I wrote back in high school. I'm not going to be thinking about the grade I got in high school. I'm not going to be thinking about my, my high school achievements. I'm going to be thinking about that one time I went bike riding with my dad. Or I'm going to be thinking about that one time I did an escape room with my friends. Or I'm going to be thinking about when I was, I planted flowers in the garden with my mom, you know? I'm not going to be thinking about a trivial high school essay, but that was what I prioritized. I sacrifice so many potential happy memories and meaningful moments I could have spent with my loved ones in favor of IB. And I just question if that's even worth it. You know, like my parents will never be that young again. I will never be that young again. I will never be in such close proximity to my friends again. And that that's really the gist of it. Like, I really gave up the last two years of my childhood 
doing something that really, in the long term, I won't care about, and probably will have minimal impact on my life. And I think your purpose in life really is to be content and to be happy, and to do the things you love. And IB was not that for me. IB did not generate happy memories for me. And I really regret the more meaningful moments I could have had, but gave up on because I was too preoccupied with IB matters. And that's time I will never get back. You know. Okay, so lastly, this is gonna be a shorter episode. Thank goodness.、Um, lastly, I just want to talk a little bit about my、um, how the COVID pandemic affected my IB experience because it definitely played a pretty big role. And I think this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think the pandemic had a overall positive effect. On my IB experience, because of the pandemic, a lot of、uh, IB requirements were removed or got canceled. Like one, like my grade eleven exams were canceled because of the pandemic. The G four project was canceled because of the pandemic. And even in my grade twelve year, a lot of papers、um, for IB exams, like paper three, I think of English or something, or paper two of English, just a lot of components of the exam were、uh, taken out for the sake of the pandemic. And I cannot tell you how grateful I was for that, because if my IB experience was Any more intense, I probably would not have survived. And I don't even care if that means I got an inauthentic IB experience or if I got an easier time. I do not care. I am so glad I got the easy way out because I don't think I could have managed any more stress. However, there were definitely many, many negative. Uh, side effects caused by the pandemic. The main one being this on and off of online classes and in-person classes, and constantly quarantining, and just people being out of class all the time. Especially in 2021, when we were just getting back into school, everything was uncertain. Nobody had gotten vaccinated. It was just a very chaotic time, and luckily, because we were like a cohort, we actually m- managed quite well before、uh, we had to go into quarantine. Because if one person in one of your classes got sick, the entire class would have to be quarantined. So for people not in IB, because they had so many different. Classes and all the classes were scrambled. People were class entire classes were just going out all like constantly, but because we were all in the same classes, all in the same small group of like fifty-ish people, we managed to go quite a bit longer than people who were not. So I guess that was slightly beneficial. But then the second any one of us got sick, we did. We basically indefinitely went online, so this constant switching on and off was not really conducive to a good learning environment, and a lot of my learning experience was definitely compromised due to pandemic-related distractions, because you can only learn so well online through Zoom, and you're distracted all the time. Also, your screen time is off the charts.、So、you just don't focus as well. Another thing that kind of really only applied to me is that both my parents got COVID at the same time, and this really took a toll on my mental health. Um, 
because first of all, this was right at the start of a new semester in IB. So this was probably the most stressful time in my grade eleven year. And as I was transitioning to a new semester, all my new classes were starting. Both my parents got COVID, so that meant I had to stay at home for two weeks. And it's really hard to catch up in IB, even if you miss one day. So the thought of missing two weeks, and normally this wouldn't be a big deal because if a whole class is quarantined, then the teacher just moves the class online. Or if fifty percent of the class is quarantined. The teacher would set up like a Zoom meeting, and set up a computer and everything. But I was the only one in my class quarantining, so teachers weren't as accommodating, and they were basically just like, you know, I'll send you the the worksheets, or you can have your friends catch you up on all the things. So it was definitely a lot. It was a logistical nightmare to keep up with all my classes in these two weeks, and I was just constantly emailing people or messaging people, trying to keep myself in the loop, and that was stressful. But on top of that, I had two humans in my household with this seemingly deadly disease that I knew nothing about, and I didn't know where I could go in my house to not get myself infected. So I. Was basically isolating myself into one room, like my room, and then the office room. Like those were those were the only two rooms in the house where I could safely go. I don't think anybody can prepare you to for both your parents to get sick at the same time because they basically shut themselves into their own rooms, and all of a sudden it felt like I was the Adult in the family, like I had to not only cook and clean and disinfect all the groceries and do everything. I had to take care of both my parents. I had to make sure my brother didn't get infected. I had to make sure he got to school on time, that he was doing okay. On and on top of that, I had to make sure I wasn't infecting myself, and I was. You know, keeping up with all my schoolwork, I was also transitioning into a new semester. All my IB things were due, so it was just a lot of stress. And those two weeks of my life were definitely two of the hardest weeks. And maybe I'll go into depth about that experience another time.、Um, but I really just felt abandoned by my parents almost. You know, like the importance. I guess that just showed the importance of having like a support system throughout your IB experience. You really need people who are there to root for you, but also take care of your of the day to day tasks. Like it really helps to have someone cook for you, or clean, or do your laundry. You know, and that that might sound bad, but. To really do well and focus on your academics, you rely on your parents to do the household things, to do the adulting, right? And so when I was basically abandoned on the ship, and I was suddenly running the household, and cooking and doing all these things, it took a lot of time away from my academics. And so, yeah, it was overall very stressful. And Those are all the points I have to talk about. This is a short one. Okay, so let's go into the tips and tricks here. Again, I don't really have any. I would just say, I guess I'll give advice to my past self, like if I could have done something better, because I definitely did not take these tips into account during my actual IB years, but. If I were to give advice to my younger self, I would just say, overcome the jealousy. Stop comparing yourself to people and stop viewing people as the enemy. 
you know, I definitely saw a lot of people in a negative light as competition or just people were out to get me. But they're really not. Like, they're there to support you even if you perceive it as social pressure or expectation. Your support group is there to support you, right? So try to accept the help. Try to be more open-minded and hang out with people. Try to be more intentional with making time with people. And social interaction definitely helps your mental health, right? So I would just say try not to view social interaction as a burden or a distraction, but rather a break. And enjoy that time with people and then go back to your work. Don't constantly think about the work you're not doing when you're hanging out with people because that really subtracts or detracts from the experience. Okay, and for my song recommendation today, uh, the song is called Where Do We Go From Here by Caleb Hearn. And I th- I'm pretty sure this is a love song. But I listened to this to a lot. I listened to this song a lot during my IB years um, because I didn't necessarily view it from like a ro- romant. What's it called? Romantical? Romantic. Oh my. I didn't view it from a romantic perspective, but more just from the perspective of falling out of love with the people you once loved. And I viewed that from like a familial standpoint or from a friendship standpoint. Or, you know, if you're involved with someone romantically, um, that, that could apply to you as well. But since I was, you know, a single Pringle during my Ivy years, um, I really viewed this song through like, more like more platonically like growing distant with the people you once had a really close relationship with and sort of mourning um the good times you once had with those people so that's what the song really is about uh it's a very good song also very sad so uh yeah take a listen next week is going to be the last um the last IB episode, we're going to be talking about my overall general thoughts on the IB program. We're going to be going over some pros of the IB program. It's just like a summary episode and I'll just be giving my two cents on is IB worth it? Would I choose IB again? And sort of the overall takeaways from the IB program. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I'll see you guys next week. And yeah, goodbye.